and uh, state to pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the my voice holds out, <coughs> we'll be okay. Uh, first, the announcements, Fisher's Care, uh, Todd. Yeah, thank you, President Block. Uh, it's exciting uh, in the city of Fisher's on, on a number of levels. I've been really proud of the work that Mayor Fadness has done and led uh, from 2015, I think the moment sworn into office, kind of championed a mental health initiative that has really uh, created an environment within our community that's brought people together. Basically, the mental health initiative has been to try to remove the stigma around depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts. Uh, and that permeates throughout our society. Uh, and so with that, one of the things that really was a, was a champion part, and what uh, I know Mayor Fadness, I know myself, several people, uh, I, most of the council, I think, have been involved at some point or other, is that we don't want this to become a legacy based on, on po politics or based on administration or government, but based on grassroots and the community really coming together to reach out to one another and be there for each other. Uh, so I'm excited to announce that in, during, during this uh, past few years, uh, we've been bringing together uh, interfaith groups, so a diverse group of, of faith leaders in our community, and it also actually attracted business leaders in our community. They want to give back. And so what's going to be launched uh, here uh, this week is called Fisher's Cares. Uh, so you'll see that uh, we'll have a press release that will go out in a day or so. Um, and on stigmafreefishers.com is, is the website where there's a lot of information, a lot of uh, resources for people that are looking for assistance with regard to maybe they're in distress, they don't know what to do, maybe there's a family member in distress and they're just kind of disoriented at the moment, they want to figure out where they can go. One of the first lines of defense always for us is just finding somebody we can talk to. So it may not be a 911 situation, but say somebody just lost their job. Maybe somebody has a relational issue. Maybe there's something that's just triggered a moment where they feel like they just they have to talk to somebody. And I believe more than ever, we've become a society isolated from one another, especially with social media, especially with the devices that our, our kids carry around, we carry around. We've become siloed off in our own little world, and we view the world differently now, and it's not as relational. So this helps break down a little bit of the relational piece. So with Fisher's Cares, there are going to be six or seven locations. The website's uh, already up, so if you go to stigmafreefishers.com, it will, and you go into the adult section, there's a tab there for Fisher's Cares. It takes you off to a different site that's off of the city website, so it is a separate uh, grassroots effort by the community, not by the government. Um, and what it is are pastors, uh, lay people, and uh, faith leaders, and also business owners that are want to take and give that back their time, you can actually schedule an appointment at Fisher's YMCA. You can schedule an appointment at Sunrise Cafe, at Pinheads, and at a couple different uh, 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 religious uh, faith buildings in our community. And it's a pilot program. We are, just by talking about it, we've already had more interest from different businesses that want to just say, hey, here's a free cu cup of coffee, Sit down, relax, there'll be someone here to talk to you. They're not licensed counselors. They're not there to provide 911 assistance. Obviously, they can get you that. They can call 911 and help. But, um, but this will be a thing. So they'll be able to go in and actually schedule, uh, or, or you'll see times they're available. They can just drop in and just say, hey, is there somebody I can talk to? There will also be stations in, the, in some of these places where you can go in and just sit down for a minute and just just chill out and just re relax. And I, I think that sometimes that's what we need in our, in our society to get away from maybe the stress moment. So really excited about this. There'll be a lot more information that will be released here this week and, and next week. Um, a couple of news organizations want to talk about this and really, really excited. The big, biggest part is it's the community embracing this. And this is something that can hopefully sustain itself in the community fabric 
regardless of who's sitting here, who the mayor is, whatever, whatever administration's uh, around, that, that's something that's ingrained in, in Fisher. So that's great. Thank you, Todd. That sounds like a terrific initiative. Uh, we have two proclamations. The first one is the Gold Star Mothers Proclamation, and David's going to read that. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, actually, Todd, you were talking about a couple things right there, and it made me think, and I'd just like to go and separate for a second and talk about something that is uh, along the lines of that. But it is with uh, Gold Star Mothers. I'm going to read this proclamation, but it's really about Gold Star families. And most of the people that know me um, well know that one thing I'm involved with is uh, I'm a part of a sailboat team, and uh, for the last 16 years I go to uh, New England and we compete in a sailboat race, but we welcome wounded warriors to go with us. They come, we train, and then we compete side by side. But what we do locally is at the Indianapolis Sailing Club, we also have on different nights, um, we have little races here and service members can come and they can, uh, they can work with us and, and compete. Uh, but then also after that, that's really where the camaraderie comes in, is after that there's a, there's a deck up on top and they can come and talk and, and work things uh, that they need to. Uh, some of our service members, they come, um, they're trained for certain topics when they were in the military. And when they get out, they don't have that release, which is very similar to what Todd was just talking about. And I've had some that have called me over the years, and I won't give names, but they just said that I was in a certain situation and I just needed a little bit of help. So we've welcomed them um, locally. Then also we do that uh, you know, nationally. Uh, it's called Operation Set Sail. So if anything interests you with that topic or um, just to learn how to sail and kind of work with some of our service members, uh, just send me an email and I'll, I'll put you in touch with the right people. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to read the uh, Gold Star Mothers, but it's a little different. Um, uh, it's Gold Star Families now. Uh, Whereas on June 23rd, 1936, the U.S. Congress passed a joint congressional resolution that designated the last Sunday in September as Gold Star Mother's Day, and whereas the history of Gold Star Mother's dates back to World War I, when it became the custom of military families to hang a service flag near their front window, these flags featured a blue star for each family member actively serving in the U.S. Armed Forces, and the Gold Star flag first appeared when mothers who lost sons in the war uh, sold gold stars over the blue stars and whereas the city of Fishers recognizes the gold star on a service flag as a symbol of those soldiers who have fallen in the line of duty protecting our freedom and whereas we honor those members of our community uh, who have lost a son or daughter making the ultimate sacrifice and service to our country and whereas on this day we remember our commitment to gold star mothers and their families who carry on with pride and courage despite suffering the tragic loss. Therefore, I, Scott Fadness, Mayor of the City of Fishers, do hereby proclaim September 29th, 2019, as Gold Star Mother's Day in the City of Fishers, and all residents are encouraged to celebrate it. Great. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. Thank you for making it personal as well. I know you give a lot of time to it. Uh, the next proclamation is the Make-A-Wish Day proclamation, and Cecilia's going to read that. All right. So I'm going to read the Make-A-Wish Proclamation, whereas October 18th celebrates Make-A-Wish Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana, granting its 17,000 wish, the day that Cammie Heiner's wish for a friendship swing to be placed in Roy G. Holland Memorial Park came true, and whereas Make-A-Wish grants life-changing wishes to children battling critical illnesses, and whereas when a wish is granted, a child's fear, a child replaces fear with confidence, sadness, with joy, and anxiety with hope. And whereas wishes give children strength to fight their illnesses, make a wish a it makes a wish a necessary part of a child's overall medical treatment plan. Therefore, I, Scott Fadness, Mayor of the City of Fishers, do hereby proclaim October 18th, 2019, as Make-A-Wish Day in the city of Fishers, and all residents are encouraged to celebrate it. Signed this 10th day of October, 2019, Scott Fadness, Mayor, City of Fishers. It was really exciting this past Friday that a wish was granted at Holland Park, and I was not able to attend, but I was wondering if, if, our, if Scott, if you could share just a little bit about that day. It was wonderful, and it was, it was a great day of celebration here in Fishers. Yeah, it was an extraordinary <clears throat> afternoon. The Parks and Recreation Department worked with Make-A-Wish Foundation, as well as Cami and her family. Cami's a 16-year-old young lady uh, with uh, some disabilities, and she had the opportunity 
to make uh, any grant, have one wish granted, any wish that she would like. And this uh, young, uh, extraordinary woman decided that her wish would be to put something in uh, a park that other kids could enjoy and uh, ended up putting in a, a swing that would allow uh, children and adults <laughs> of all abilities to be able to really enjoy the playground like any other uh, well-abled person would be able to. And uh, I, I just have to tell you, uh, meeting that young woman, meeting her family, there are a lot of different people there. Uh, it was extraordinary, and uh, she had so much joy watching other people uh, enjoy that new par uh, swing in our park. So it was it was a great way to end the week. Thank you, Scott and Cecilia, for that. Uh, next is uh, the, the presentations, 35th anniversary to Office Works. Uh, this is a. Wonderful opportunity to highlight some of our businesses. This is not something that we've done a great deal of, but to be honest with you, uh, there haven't been that many uh, businesses that have celebrated their 35th anniversary here in the city of Fishers, and we certainly hope that there will be more to come. Uh, tonight, we, we have the opportunity to uh, recognize and celebrate OfficeWorks in their 35th uh, year of uh, being. I think it was October 1st when uh, they celebrated it. Uh, Tom O'Neill is an individual that I've had the opportunity to sit down with and, and chat with, and he's been an active member not only in Fishers, but really in the entire central Indiana uh, area and business community. They've been often ranked as one of the best places to work, uh, and just an extraordinary group of individuals that always uh, strive to give back to the community. And so tonight we thought it'd be appropriate to, to wish them well on their 35th year of uh, work. I can honestly say, too, that their furniture is pretty great. Uh, I uh, have their furniture in my office as we speak, and uh, if it can hold me up, it's got to be pretty sturdy. <laughs> uh, so with that, Tom, I'd like you to come on up and uh, be recognized and maybe say a few words. Good to see you, Tom. Congratulations on 35 years. Thank you. Larry Martin, my partner. Larry, nice to meet you. Right. Mike, cheers. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mayor Fadness, uh, the council, thank you all very, very much uh, for this honor. It's, uh, it's been a great run here, and I certainly, uh, certainly have enjoyed, uh, obviously, the town of Fishers. Love the, uh, love the atmosphere, love the community feeling, um, and I'm looking forward to a, another 35 years. How about that? Excellent. Thank you all very much. Hey, Tom, hey, Tom you... Hey, Tom, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're also a resident of Fishers. You're, you're a resident of Fishers as well, Tom, right? Uh, no, I'm not. You're not? You moved on me? Uh, okay, we'll talk later. <laughs> okay, there we go. I like that. Pete, I'll annex you. Okay, uh, next we have some 20-year um, employee uh, recognition. Who's doing this? Chief? Thank you, Council. Uh, I'd like to uh, recognize Lieutenant uh, Darren Emmons. Darren? Darren's here with uh, Felicia's wife. Darren has served uh, our community, protected and served our community for the last 20 years. Before that, he served the Anniston, Alabama community for six years, and prior to that, he was in the United States military and the Army. So he's got a long lifetime of service uh, towards communities. In addition, while here at Fisher's Police Department, he's done a number of things. Darren's been involved in our canine program as a handler, a supervisor, and ultimately a coordinator. He's also our lead bike specialist and instructor, as well as our FTO coordinator at times when needed. And uh, in 2003, he was promoted to sergeant, and now he serves as a lieutenant over our traffic and crime reduction unit area. Uh, in addition, just two things to note before uh, I get out of your way, is that one is uh, his, un his ability to continue to serve and protect uh, fishers from the front line. What I mean is he's a 26 year veteran of law enforcement. He's out there every day like it's his first and I admire that about him. And Darren, I appreciate your 20 years of service but more importantly, your friendship. Thanks. Thank you, Darren, for your service. Uh, who is going to be presenting? Uh, I believe we have Tabitha, our fleet director, is here today to uh, talk about a couple of these next individuals. Great. 
Hello. Um, it is an honor to present these awards to two amazing gentlemen I work with. Um, they have been with the city of Fishers for 20 years now. Um, they are a huge reason, huge part of why our police and fire department are able to do their jobs. Our Department of Public Works is able to uh, keep our streets and our parks as some of the best in Indiana. I truly appreciate working with both these gentlemen and it is an honor to give Jerry Eiler and Eiler, Edwards and <laughs> Anthony Novak their 20 year service award. Thank you, Anthony and Jerry. If you guys ever want a really bad dad joke, <laughs> Anthony right there has uh, the best bad dad jokes you'll ever hear in your oh, life. Oh, we may need to hear it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Come one. on. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Finance Committee, John? Thank you, Rich. Uh, the Finance Committee met last Wednesday, October the 16th, and uh, considered the following items that we recommend for approval this evening. In particular, item 6A on the consent agenda, request to authorize city controller to transfer funds. In the uh, item in budget and financial, item 8, request to, we recommend for approval. The 2020 city uh, Fisher's budget. Item 9, resolution approving creation of Pullman Point allocation area. Item 10, resolution approving creation of stations allocation area. And item 11, uh, approve amending ordinance authorizing 2019 lit refunding bonds. Thank you, John. As always in the county. Uh, next consent agenda. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Pete, second by John. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And Very I'd good. like to abstain from 6A. Uh, at the meeting. Jennifer, did you hear that? David is abstaining from 6A? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, economic development, none. Moving to budget and financial item 8091619C. For the record, Lisa Bradford, City Controller. The item before you is the third reading of the City of Fishers 2020 budget and adoption. This budget is the same as was initially presented to the council in September for our public hearing. Uh, for your reference, since the last meeting, the PSAP has passed through the county, so we don't need to make any adjustments in our budget related to the PSAP, the public safety access tax not passing. If there are no questions, I'd ask for approval. Questions of council? Yeah, Rich, I just want to go over a couple things. Um, I, I was not able to come to the last meeting. I apologize. I think I make most meetings, but that's one I was not able to come to for a work event. Um, I just want to go over a couple things with uh, in the past we've had some big uh, big items over the last couple of years with the police station fire station mm -hmm. 116th Street State Road 37 mm -hmm. uh, DPW and some other things this year there was a, a big piece in the budget that's uh, I think very important and yes it does come with uh, with some costs this uh, I've got 2013 and 2017 and what these documents are are kind of what I use uh, myself as a council member and I know staff does which is uh, staff in the DPW side has gone out and they review every single road and every single neighborhood and every single street to find out whether, and they put a rating on it, whether it's one to five, one meaning next year that needs to get repaved. In five years, uh, we've got a little bit of time. And what they do is that takes all the politics out of it and that takes um, all of the uh, uncertainty out of it, but it also comes with a, a, a known price tag because also in these, they go through each year a certain number of items need to get repaved and they'll, they'll put a budget item on it. Uh, the first, and I just brought the last two, this has been going on for a while, so I know Scott and I have worked on this probably for 10 years at least. And the reason we started to look at it 10 years ago is the Fisher's growth pattern happened about 10 or 15 years ago. And anytime you build a subdivision in a street and a curb and a sidewalk and a ramp, those things about 10 to 15 years down, about five years you'll need to do something, but 15 to 20 years you're going to need to do some major maintenance. And when a lot of those things happen at the same time, we just knew that that was going to come down the pike. 
at about 15 years from now, so that's why we started thinking about it 10 years ago, uh, that was going to start to come due. So at the time, they had about a $2.8 million per year uh, for the first one, and then the second one was about $4 million. And at the time, we were about $500,000 of our resurface fund, and that was not negative. That was not that we weren't thinking. It's that was appropriate for that moment in time in Fishers. Since then, all of those subdivisions that were built have started to age, as we thought, as this document shows, and they've come up. So now our budget is about $4 million uh, for that. Now with that said, um, you know, we've got some successes, and I'm just naming some subdivisions near me. You, know, you guys are the same way too, but the Pines, Roxbury, Berkeley Grove, Berkeley Ridge, Timber Springs, to name a few, have been uh, repaid, but those have been asphalt. We've got another issue, uh, which is, and it's not unique to Fishers, but when you do a concrete street, it lasts even longer. But when it fails, it fails, and there's very limited ways that you can do that. I lived for the first 12 years in Fishers in Connor Creek, which is 116th and Allisonville, and it was a concrete street. And I know that staff came out, DPW, they did some things, and then after a couple of years, it kind of came, well, that, okay, it's starting to look good. But there are some other uh, streets and some other subdivisions. Uh, you've got uh, Connor Creek, which I just mentioned, uh, Walnut Creek, Summerfield, and also Burberry. Uh, Burberry is a very big one that we've been watching over the last few years. And we've done that in a sense that uh, I think, Scott, over the last couple of years, you had staff go to different conferences, different sites, different places, so that we could look, how do we do this in the right manner other than you know ripping everything out? Um, unfortunately, there isn't a, a, an easy way to do this. We didn't find a magic solution. So what we did have to do was to put into a budget one year uh, to actually get that replaced. And that year was decided to be now because you can either go in and do a couple panels, then a couple years, a couple panels, a couple years, a couple panels. The residents will never see it. And it might even get ahead of you because if you don't repair, then it's ones that were next to it that are in good shape, they might not last. So you have a, a situation where you need to, to do that. So that expenditure is in the budget. It's a very large expenditure. And there's a couple of other concrete streets that we're doing. But the main thing for the public I just wanted to share is this is, these documents are things that we use so when we go out and DPW uh, reviews our streets so that we know when things uh, need to be repaved. And it's not politics, it's all what street, the, the certain age, and it might um, need to be done a little bit sooner than others. But that's how we've come up with the different uh, repaving schedules that we've done. And that's how we've come up with, uh, with this budget for one that uh, we either do Burberry and then we don't do other subdivisions for about two years or we do those subdivisions and we don't do Burberry and this is one that we just need to kind of get ahead because uh, that one's been uh, failing for a little bit of time and the last thing I wanted to mention is I do not want to mention one subdivision over another because we're all one community and it's one of those adages I always see when there's two people in a boat and there's a leak on one side and that person's rowing it or getting the leak out and the other person saying well I'm glad the hole's not on my side we're all in this together, and whether we live in Burberry or not, it's very important so that we do Burberry, we get it done properly, and then we can do um, other streets as we always thought we would over the last couple of years based on what we're supposed to do. And then the last thing, which is off the subject, but I know Mike's in the audience, but uh, it's also the concrete streets and um, asphalt streets that are private roads. Um, that, as I understand, that staff is getting close. They're reviewing, and when I say reviewing, they're actually going through and categorizing what is where, and there should be a proposal at the end of the year or the beginning of next year to actually get that done too. That's separate from the budget, but I just wanted to mention that. So those are some things I will be supportive of the budget. It's something we've worked on for the last really 10 years is to come up with our plan and implement it. Um, but there are some bigger ticket uh, projects that need to happen. If they don't happen, I don't know um, how you get them done. Thank you. Thank you, David. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna make a motion to approve, but before I formally do that I wanted to recognize the mayor the department heads the staff the finance committee for the countless hours that go in to preparing each and every year's budget every year's budget is not done on a whim it's not done kind of pulling numbers out of the hat it's a very arduous process and and Scott and his team and John and his finance committee team the hours that have gone through there to make sure all that information is fed down to appropriate people and made public should should be uh, also commended for the effort they did on this budget. And I will go ahead and make the motion to approve our 2020 city budget. Oh, I'll second. All right, uh, motion by Pete to approve, seconded by Todd. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 
Opposed? I certainly want to thank Lisa for all her hard work. She is a tremendous <laughs> controller for the city of Fishers. Um, the work that you do for us and the time you spend and the resources you have that you bring to our community are second to none. And I really want to thank you for all your hard work and your knowledge and your wisdom and everything that you do for us every single day. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. Item nine, R102, 119A. Um, if I could, I will just mention nine and 10 together because they're procedurally about the same, they're the same uh, process. Um, and then you just vote on them separately. But essentially item nine is to create an allocation area for Pullman Point, which is essentially the Scannell project off of Lantern Road. As you recall, earlier this year, we agreed uh, to a project agreement with Scannell, and in that, uh, there will be a TIF area created for them, and so this is the procedural step to create their TIF area, and this is the same item, issue that's no, item number 10, and this is a creation of an allocation area for the stations, which is the third phase over at the development near the yard. There's no comments from council. I'm gonna make a motion to approve item nine. Motion to approve by Pete I'll for second. item nine. Second by John. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Just uh, as a, as a point consistent. of reference, I'm not mistaken, the Pullman point area those bonds will be developer owned bonds those, yes those are conduit they will not yes, be so on our balance sheet. those are no they are listed as informational but they're technically not considered the city's debt obligation just, for just clarifying thank yeah, you yeah yeah for uh pullman point and then if there's no questions i'm going to make a motion to approve item 10. i just want to make a, a note for the record i think jennifer caught it that uh david, david said no david yeah, was sorry. Sorry. Okay. just to be consistent yeah, so. very good uh, item 10 i make a motion to approve motion Motion to approve item 10 by Pete, second by Todd. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay, again, same reason. Okay, David's a nay, and abstention. One abstention. Okay, very good, motion passes. Item 11. Um, the item before you, this is simply a procedural. When we were before you, I believe last month with um, the ordinance to refund the uh, 2009 uh, uh, COET bonds, we had it listed as having 125% coverage, and actually, per our policy, we didn't catch in time, it needs to be 150% coverage on that lit bond, so this is just a procedural cleanup item. So if we could suspend the rules and pass that on first reading so we can go ahead and refinance. I'll make that. a motion to suspend the rules. Okay, a motion to suspend the rules by Pete, second by Selena. All in favor of suspending the rules? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'll make a motion to approve. Selena, second? Second. Okay. <laughs> uh, motion to approve by Pete, second by Selena. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. Um, item, where was I? That 12. was 12, thank you. 091619G. Before Tony gets started, I want to go ahead and thank Larry for his, some of his podcast of noting the fact that these are voluntary annexations that don't really require a lot of time. So, so for those people on the audience that don't understand voluntary annexation, it basically says, hey, I want to come into your city and be taxed by you. Okay, so that's, that's a very, very cursory review of annexations. So in order to speed up time, I'm going to take these one at a time since these are third readings for the next three items. Correct, Tony? Correct. I'm going to make a motion to approve number 12 on a third reading of a voluntary annexation. Second. Motion to approve by Pete, second by John. All in favor of approving item 12? Aye. 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 Opposed? Now I'll make a motion to approve item 13. Second. Motion to approve by Pete, second by Todd. All in favor of approving 13? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good, Pete. And then item 14, I'll make a motion to approve again, the last voluntary annexation third reading. All right, motion to approve by Pete, second by Selena. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Sorry, Tony. No problem. And the next one will be uh, require a public hearing in first and second reading. This is a two lot property that's 10.14 acres in the South Central District. And this property was uh, subdivided and platted into two lots uh, recently. And as part of the platting, they were eligible for annexation and have voluntarily agreed to annex. So. Uh, we're here tonight for the public hearing and first and second reading. 
Okay, so seeing this is a public hearing, if there are any members of the public who wish to uh, speak, please raise your hand. Uh, you'll be asked to come before the mic. You'll be given three minutes in which to speak. Are there any members of the public wishing to speak? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. And Mo Pete? Motion to have first and second reading. Great, very good, thank you. Item 16, zero, or 102119A. And this again is another first and second reading of public hearing. This is a one lot, uh, just under one acre, off 131st Street, uh, not too far from New Britain Elementary. The property had recently gone through a variance, and as part of that, we requested if they would annex, and they've agreed to that. So we're here again for a voluntary annexation of this uh, single family home. Mm -hmm. So again, this is a public hearing. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak? If you'd raise your hand. Seeing none, we will close the public hearing. At first and second reading. Okay, noted, thank you. Um, where are we? 17. 17, yes. So yes. Okay, item 17102119B. Uh, good evening, for the record, Megan Schaefer with the Planning and Zoning Department. The item before you is a request to approve an easement and right-of-way vacation for the nickel plate stations mixed-use development. So this project is generally located on the north uh, east corner of 116th Street and the future nickel plate trail. The first part of the vacation is an ingress, egress, and drainage easement which exists between lots 13 and 14. This is proposed to be vacated to serve the redevelopment project. The second portion of this vacation is the right-of-way right of way that's depicted here in this exhibit. Uh, this includes portions of J.C., Moore, Station, and North Street. And again, these are requested to be vacated as a part of the new development project. Uh, this does require public hearing. Staff recommends allowing for the combined readings, holding the public hearing, and approving the easement and right-of-way vacation. I didn't realize it was public hearing until you said that. Okay, uh, again, this is a public hearing, so if there are members of the public who wish to speak, if you could raise your hand, you'll be asked to come before the mic and state your name and record for the address. Any members wishing to speak? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Questions? Just make a motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Pete, second Rich, by. Can you actually make a motion to suspend the rules? Oh, sorry, it's thank not, you. It wasn't on the it's not on there. there, Chris. Motion sorry. to suspend. I'll second that. All right, uh, first then, uh, motion to suspend the rules by Pete, second by John. All in favor of suspending the rules? Aye. 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 Now? I make a motion to approve now that we suspended the rules. Second. Okay, uh, motion to approve by Pete, second by Eric. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And I'll abstain from that. Okay, one, no one abstention. David? Move David? Very good. Um, item 18, 102119C. Yeah, this is a uh, final reading of a text amendment to the UDO for signage update. We actually recently updated the UDO in August of this year for substantial changes. Right after we did that, the county had amended their sign standards as it relates to just describing and defining the right-of-way and clearly stating that no signs are allowed in the public right-of-way other than some governmental signs for safety reasons or any other uh, governmental purposes, and which our ordinance already prohibited signs in the right-of-way as well. Um, however, since we have county roads within the city, they're asking for every jurisdiction to adopt that same language so they're uniform across the board. So we've done that. We've just bod made, modified these sections to define what the right-of-way is and what the right-of-way means and what signs are not allowed and are allowed in there. So this is, in our opinion, a minor change, but it's to be consistent with the county uh, so that, like, Oleo Road has the same standards as the rest of the city and other county and city roads. With that, uh, we have plan commission have public hearing and was reviewed and approved by the plan commission. Any requirements here, Chris? Nope. Final reading. Right. I mean, it, yeah. I think there was yeah. no. It came back with an approval, okay. right? So there's no. Okay. Pretty much sure it's unanimous approval, wasn't it, Tony? Correct. Correct. Yeah. 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 So there's nothing really to note. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion to approve by Pete. Second by Selena. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Motion passes. That concludes the regular 
the session, I guess, uh, well, I guess technically we are on the unfinished or new business. Is there any? No? See none? Good. All right, this is uh, item 20, community comments. If there are members of the public who wish to make a comment, you can come before us. Mike, if you'll state your name and address for the record. Again, remind you that you have three minutes. Sure thing. Uh, my name is Michael Colby. I live at uh, 7105 Cold Lake Drive, Fishers 46038. You didn't expect me to come to a meeting without saying something, did you? <laughs> um, actually, I, I, I'm just going to uh, just give you a reminder. Early voting will, will start uh, this week. Uh, it'll be starting on Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And then next week, it'll be Wednesday, but not Thursday. That's Halloween. And then Friday and Saturday. Um, and not to offend anybody, but I don't expect a big turnout in this election, so uh, you know, there won't be a big crowd out in your lobby. Saying that, I want to say that I do appreciate uh, the patience that the city staff uh, has with it. Sometimes we get pretty busy up here. 3,000 people a day come through here, and I know it's disruptive. Uh, I have cookies, and I try to keep the kids quiet. That doesn't always work. So. If you want more information on times, it's, you can go to the, uh, three minutes, you can go to the county elections office and it'll give you the uh, time. But we'll be in this room. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank, you Mike. thank you, Mike, for working that time too. Any other members? Jocelyn? Good evening, Jocelyn Vare, 13873 Carolina Court. Uh, so tonight, the 2020 city budget was finalized and the fact is, it did include the fifth consecutive property tax rate increase in five years. It is very reasonable for residents to question the necessity of having to pay more in taxes again. And there is a push and pull of residents wanting to keep taxes as low as possible and the municipality wanting to accomplish and fund things for the residents. So this should be a full conversation that includes prioritizing and planning and listening. The 2020 budget was not a conversation, nor was the outcome beneficial for all residents. The bottom line is we have to pay more in taxes. And no one likes that, nor should they, no matter what the reason. So in the spirit of moving forward, I would like to submit the following recommendations for the 2021 budget and that public conversation. So what I've heard from residents is they should be able to, they feel that they should be able to expect 30 days before public, 30 days before the public hearing a clear, straightforward proposed summary of the budget that is broadcast on all the city channels and submitted to the media like it used to be. And the purpose of that is just making sure residents, as many residents are as aware as possible. The public presentation should be clear and accurate and facing the residents. The presentation should not include shorthand. My friends, the property tax rate is never 71 cents. It is 71 cents of $100 of assessed value. So just that little nuance, that is the clarity I'm talking about. And any adjustment to the tax rate should be stated clearly. Uh, I uh, have heard that there's an interest for a tax summary of a five-year, year-over-year summary comparison uh, for Fishers, not comparison to other cities. Why? We don't live in other cities. We live here and include the detail of major proposed projects and priorities. The budget itself, residents deserve responsibility and accountability, no surprises, and of course, Concrete roads did not deteriorate overnight, as we said. They should have been anticipated and budgeted for within the budget. We would like a statement of next year's projections. So households budget too. So those projections are very valuable. So a balanced budget, responsible debt management, and of course, minimum cash reserves, and of course, no tax increases are what residents expect. So. In fact, in 24, 2021, residents will expect the tax, property tax rate to decrease because it has been said that this is a tax rate increase for 2020, that's one year only. So thank you for listening to me. I'm sure we can all agree those expectations are reasonable. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members wishing to speak? Hello, uh, Logan Day. 
I live at 12812 Milton Road. Uh, I just have a few things here, if I can get my screen to come up right. Um, first one's a little bit lighthearted, but it is serious, uh, and it's directed at the mayor. Uh, we have a red light out uh, at um, the crossover intersection of uh, over I-69, at that southeastern five-way. Uh, there's a red light out on the eastbound lane, and I almost got hit by a car because they didn't see the red light. So if you could pass that on to uh, Eric Pethel, that would be wonderful. Um, number two, I wanted to make comment to um, Councillor George, and, and I appreciate the, uh, the explanation that you had given to the road problems and trying to anticipate that. And you had mentioned that no one, or that uh, it's not really a matter of politics, it's a matter of you know, looking out and projecting uh, roadways and how those are going to deteriorate over time. Um, I personally don't, I, I don't know that I ever thought it was uh, a, an issue or a matter of politics, and I don't know that others did. Um, the concern is, if it, is it a matter of priorities? So I just ask that in the future, is it possible that we start looking at what we know this deterioration rate is going to be on our roads so that residents, as they start budgeting for the next few years, they understand that realistically there's gonna be a tax increase in this year or the next year um, as opposed to that coming out in the year. Because if we have this kind of data where we know that after five years we anticipate the roads being at this level, we should be able to project that out a little bit further. Um, and also prioritizing. You know, we've, we have had some tax increases or discussion uh, of, of increased expenditures for want-type projects as opposed to need-type projects. So are we prioritizing those wants and then realizing that the needs put us in a position where we have to raise taxes for those where we could have otherwise allocated differently? So that's a question that I have. Um, the last one, I guess, is for the, for the, the council at large. Uh, there had been a discussion or I guess a complaint lodged against our clerk. Um, it, I guess it was a discrimination complaint. And so I ask, uh, given the conclusion of that investigation, uh, I guess it's my formal request if the council could, if not now, at a next meeting, um, vote on being able to release a version of that for the public that has all personally identifiable information redacted from it. Uh, I used to serve in a capacity of compliance officer for a company, and I know that that type of thing is possible, and certainly for a government agency. Um, we would like to understand why our duly elected uh, official is, has, has been stripped of, of all unnecessary duties because there's certainly some concerns uh, of, of what some of those mismanagement issues were and why that would justify stripping of duties that were otherwise and for any period of time uh, assigned to that individual. So I'd like you to consider uh, releasing that to the public with all the personally identifiable information redacted. Thank you, Logan. Wayne? Wayne McCarg, 10915, 300 yard drive in Fishers. I'm a secretary of the Hamilton Property Association, president of the Persimmon Woods Association, and I basically came to thank you for something you did for us. And that was that in June, we had a contractor for the city come and do some work and they pretty well tore things up. And I documented it at the time in writing. I recorded the meeting we had and I took photographs and we came to you, Pam Vall, president, and I came to you and we presented the situation. And in the meantime, Rich had been making calls in our behalf and that night the mayor said, let me have that information, I wanna work on it. And I'm very happy to tell you that the mayor came up to me at the last meeting and he had worked out basically a 50-50 split. And I know that you folks are too busy to get involved in those kind of things generally, but I just want you to know that we really appreciate it and we're aware of the kindness that you gave us. And Mayor, thank you in particular. Thank you, Wayne. Are there any other members of the public who wish to speak? Seeing none, we will close the community comment. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, second by Todd. All in favor? Aye. Thank you.